My name is Robin Clark. In this presentation, I will give you an overview of simulation and then introduce you to ExtendSim. A simulation model is a powerful tool. Models are used to study real problems too complex to analyze with spreadsheets. Models allow you to perform tests and experiments which would be difficult to perform on the real system. These tests and experiments can be performed with a model at a fraction of the cost. The results of these experiments can be used to help make better business decisions. Here is a very simple example of how a simulation model can be used to make better decisions. Dr. Joe wanted to improve his practice from the perspective of his patients. Does this scene look familiar? Lots of people in a waiting room? Dr. Joe wanted to reduce the waiting time, so he decided to perform a study. Dr. Joe collected treatment time data on his patients, like I have shown in the chart to the right. This time includes the time Dr. Joe reads the patient history, evaluates the patients, and documents the visit. Dr. Joe collected this data over several days. He finally determined that his average treatment time was 15 minutes. Perfect. With an average treatment time of 15 minutes per patient, it seems like a great idea to schedule four patients per hour. Wouldn't you agree? However, Dr. Joe remembered one of his colleagues showing him a simulation model last year, and he thinks he might want to try this as well. Let's set this model up for Dr. Joe and show him what his practice would look like with the patient data he has gathered. This is the Extensive Model Worksheet. The first task we will do is add the executive from the item library. Next, we'll go to the Run Simulation Setup dialog and change the end time so that the model will run for 600 minutes. Next, we will add the Create block which creates items based on a random distribution. In this case, it will be an exponential distribution with a mean of 15 minutes. Next, we'll add the queue for the patients waiting in the waiting room. Next, we'll add the activity for the patients in the treatment area. We will set this up with a log normal distribution with a mean of 15 minutes and a standard deviation of 3 minutes. Once the treatment is finished, we will send the items to an exit block to remove them from the system. Now we can add a plotter so we can plot the queue length during the run. Let's now run the model with the animation on and see how the items flow through the system. The green circles moving through the system represents the patients. You can see them being created, waiting in the queue until there's capacity in the treatment area or the activity, and then exiting the system. Now let's open up the plot and see the plot during the run. This is plotting the number of patients waiting in the waiting room. Let's turn the item animation off and open up the plot and run the model a few more times simply observing the plot of the waiting room. We might also want to look at the results of the queue at the end of the run. This could include the average queue length as well as the maximum queue length, the average wait time as well as the maximum wait time. We can see these results at the end of each run if we want to run the model several runs. We can also go look at the results of the activity in the same manner. Let's further look at that plot. We saw from running the model several times that the plot keeps changing every run. This is normal. If we looked closely at the actual system, we would find there are seldom two days alike. 
Well, the model mimics that reality. We can also see from the plot that some days the waiting room builds up to seven people and some days even more. Seven does not sound like a lot. However, that equates to a waiting time of over an hour and a half. That is bad. So maybe scheduling four patients per hour is not a great idea. What else could we do? Maybe we could schedule three people per hour or one patient every 20 minutes. Maybe we could reduce the treatment time or the variation in treatment time. Are there other ideas we could try? Could Dr. Joe get an assistant and split the patients between them? We could try this and see what happens. It would be much easier and cheaper to test this here in the model than actually hiring someone and trying it. So let's take a moment and reflect. The simulation model didn't tell Dr. Joe what he should do. The model gives us a sandbox to play in. The model can tell Dr. Joe how the system will perform as he tests out his ideas. This is what a simulation model is used for. In addition to being an analytical tool, models are also an effective communication tool. A model showing how a system works can stimulate creative thinking about how to improve it. Models can also facilitate open discussions around problems without necessarily assigning blame because the discussion can be focused around the model, not someone's own process. And the act of building a model forces you to truly understand the system and the factors that influence how the system operates. Let's talk more specifically about Extensium now. Extensium is a powerful general purpose simulation tool. General purpose means it is not specific to one industry. Extensium has a few interesting features I want to discuss. Extensium is very interactive. It allows you to change parameters and view results as the model is running. One of the interactive features of Extensium is the ability to change parameters while the model is running. This is very helpful for debugging. Another interactive feature of Extensim is the cloning feature. The cloning feature allows us to, to clone out the key inputs as well as the outputs onto either the main window or the notebook window. This allows us to visually see the outputs, the key outputs, as the model is running. It also allows us to see and modify the key inputs as the model is running. Extensim allows you to create reusable components. An H block is a collection of blocks wrapped up as one. Sometimes this is done to break the model into smaller functions and sometimes this is done so that the components can be reused. Let's take a look at this example model to see the use of H blocks. This model is of an emergency department. The top level shows the layout of the ED. This is an H block. If we double click on the H block, then we can open up and see the constructs that make up the H block. From here, we can see additional H blocks representing the arrivals, triage, registration, and so on. If we open up triage, we can see the blocks that make up the triage process. Let's go to the main ED. Notice the three main ED pods. They are constructed as H blocks as well. These pods are identical. This is where we can make one ED pod and reuse the construct as needed. This makes scaling the problem fairly easy, not only in this model, but also in other models. This is a very important feature. Extensim also gives the user the capability to author your own block level components. Most models don't require this, but the capability is there. Here is an example of the development environment in Extensim. This could be useful if you want to replicate scheduling logic in the model that you find on the production floor. 
Again, this typically isn't necessary, but it's here if you need it. XimSim is also visually transparent. The block icons, as well as the item animation, typically convey the meaning of the model. This is very helpful when explaining the model to others. Now let's talk about one of my favorite features of XimSim, the database. The database is integrated in XimSim. All of the blocks in XimSim can interact with the database. It is a relational database and can connect up to other data repositories for importing and exporting. The database provides a central repository for storing the model data. It helps to separate the model from the data. This is helpful in managing the model data. It also helps when multiple constructs need to use the same value. For example, if the service time for seeing a nurse in the emergency department is about five minutes, we don't want to manually input the five minutes into every emergency department room. We want to set it once in the database and have every room construct reference that same value. Let's go back to the healthcare model and take a closer look at the database it uses. I don't want to spend too much time here, just enough to give you a brief introduction on the database. I have other YouTube videos on the database, so check them out if you want more detail. This is the structure window where we can create the tables and fields. Let's look closely at the ESI probability table. This is the ESI probability table. This structure is easy for anyone to interact with as well as easy for the model to use. There are five emergency severity indexes listed in records one through five. Each one has a random percentage of occurrence. Let's look closely at the service time table. This is the service time table. Again, this structure is easy for anyone to interact with it as well as for the model to use. Also notice that the cell value is a random specification. When reading a value from one of these cells, it will return a random value from the distribution. Also notice that we only need to specify the main doctor visit time once, not once per room. All the rooms pull data from this single cell when using the main doctor visit time. That is nice. This concludes the brief extensive overview. I want to thank you for your attention. If you have any further questions, then please feel free to contact us. Check out our LinkedIn group if you are interested, as well as check out our YouTube channel, which has much more information on Extensium.